Today I want to talk about the four-speed transmission that's in the C4 Corvette. Uh, it started in 1984. That was a four-speed with overdrive. A four plus three is what they talked about. But you know what? Four-speed to me is one of the most important things in a sports car. You know, if you're going to have a muscle car like in the past and even now, you want to have a driver's car. And what I mean by that is that you're in control of that car. You know, when I when I started driving, <clears throat> the first car I had was a 1954 Ford. It was three on the tree. That's the uh, same thing as on the, on the column. And it got me used to shifting the car and driving the car. And from the very beginning, you had to learn how the car works, how you have to drive it, how it's going to work with you. <clears throat> and you really kind of become one with the car. You know more about the revving of the motor. Just all kinds of things you're in tune to the car versus an automatic where you push on the gas, hit the brake, like a big go-kart. That's to me. Now, before you slam me when I talk about automatics, <clears throat> I am not slamming automatics. They're still the fastest kind of car you can get out there. And even back in the day when I was racing, um, you know, the old jalopies, you say, like, like a 60 Chevy that I had, a stick shift is never going to shift as fast as a good automatic would do it. <clears throat> but anyway, the time went on. I always felt that you had to have a four-speed transmission when you got in a sports car. Later on, when I was in high school, I got, I stepped up to a 1960 Chevy and a 327 with the four-speed in it, with the Hurst shifter. I had to rebuild that entire engine, that 327, 300 horse. Um, right from the ground up. And I was like 17 years old and my dad, he of course helped me a lot on it. I tore it all down, pistons out, all over the garage, all over my dad's garage. And I thought, we're never going to get this back together. But you know what? Working with that car from the very beginning, I'm tearing it apart, taking it out, um, getting the right pistons, even on what rods are and rockers and all these things and how they all fit together was one of the best experiences that I have when it comes to cars because it, it makes you understand it, you know. And you go, when you understand that, how the engine works, how the transmission works, how the shifting works, how the gearing works, it puts you in tune when you're sitting in the car with a four-speed transmission or more or a six-speed but a m manual transmission you feel where you are through the gears you feel what the motor's doing you know when to shift it you know when they're peaking out you know when the torque's coming in and that's a real beauty now you harder to find that kind of feeling in an automatic transmission. Now, today's flipper wheels and that, I mean, they're fantastic. There's no comparison to what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the good old school, sitting in the car and driving that car down the road. You know, the, when the C4 came out, there was a lot of pressure for gas mileage and so forth. So they had, the engineers, well, in fact, they had a gas tax. If they didn't come up with the proper gas and fuel economy, they would get taxed seriously to have every car that they built. So there was the engineers had to really work on getting the gas uh, down as much as they can, still having performance in the car. So you lost some performance in the car, so you had to make it up with other things, making the car lighter. And when the C4 came out, man, there was a lot of a lot of genius things compared to what it was in the C3. The design, the style, the rate, um, just all the way around the car handled better, drove better, took more G's, did all these things to make up for the lack of somewhat horsepower. And with the transmission was one of the ways that they could try to control the gas and mileage. Uh, it's a real easy concept that I'm going to talk about in the C with, on the uh, 4 plus 3 the whole engineering plot was to have the car run with the least amount of RPMs for the speed you're going. That's the goal. If they keep that, <clears throat> they keep the gas mileage down. <clears throat> but you've got to remember, it's a performance car, so you, you know you want to have some performance on it. But you know what? Let's take a look at when the GM came out with the C4. They talked about, they advertised what the transmission was in the C4 coming out with. So let's cut to there. Let's take a look at what they... Uh, I actually described the C4 and then we'll go from there. <clears throat> if a car has ever caught the imagination of the American public, it's the Corvette. For the past 30 years, it's been the pace-setting American sports car. The new Corvette continues that pioneering tradition, combining advanced technology with its heritage as America's only production sports car. Developed from the ground up, the new Corvette is a classic example of form following function. Practically every component, every system in the vehicle works to deliver remarkable overall performance. The result is a sports car that becomes a virtual extension of the driver. 
instantly responding to every input quickly, predictably, and with remarkable cornering stiffness. For efficient transmission of power, Corvette features an all-new manual four-speed transmission. It's a Chevrolet exclusive and one of the most sophisticated gearboxes in the world. It features a hydraulic actuated clutch and a unique overdrive gear set. The hydraulic actuation minimizes shock loading along the drive line and permits smooth engagement for rapid off-the-line acceleration. The overdrive gear set utilizes Corvette's onboard computer. Here's how it works. This chart shows the relationship between engine RPM and road speed. When you want performance, the computer senses it and disengages the gear set for direct torque transfer in all gears. But when you're driving for economy, the computer engages the gear set in second, third, and fourth gear lowering engine RPM while maintaining the same road speed. Corvette also offers an automatic four-speed overdrive transmission, featuring a high stall torque converter with a computer-activated clutch. It engages in second, third, and the overdrive fourth gear, reducing fuel-wasting slippage. Well, as you can see in the video there, they're really talking about mounting the computer combination with shifting of the four-speed transmission. It's quite unique, and we're going to go in a little more detail, but I want to show you one more thing that uh, a while ago, and you may have seen it, it's on my site here, but uh, where I went, and when I talked shortly, just introduced a little bit of the 4.3 and the shifting and the button and how that all works together, and when I come back from this, we're talking more detail about my experiences with it and more how it really works. Take a minute to talk about the uh, 4 plus 3 transmission. You know, um, during this period of time, I think through 85, 84, rather through maybe 89 it was, is this was a 4 plus 3. And um, then you know, it's really kind of an awesome transmission. I mean, uh, it's not a 5 speed or 6 speed or whatever. And it's not truly a 7 speed, but it is a 4 plus 3, which means first, second, third, and fourth, you can go into overdrive, which gives you gear between first or second and third and a gear between third and fourth and then you get an overdrive in fourth. Now realistically and they work a little bit different each year. The Ray 85 works is my favorite uh, how they set it up electronically. Anytime you're in overdrive you can floor it like you would and it would come out of overdrive and like you go into a passing gear to come back to your fourth gear. I don't use it in any of the second, third, and fourth. I have used it to test it, to realize that that is not for me. It doesn't really um, give me any advantage. Maybe if you're, you were going through a certain uh, track or something, then maybe you could find it somewhere between second and third is the gear to be on for the speed you're going, like an auto track. I could see that for sure, because it does work out good that way. But normally, like now, I'm driving along and I'm only I'm trying to do the speed limit here pretty much, and I'm pushing 2,400 RPMs. But like any overdrive situation, I, I put the clutch in. You don't have to, but I push the clutch in, and I push the top of my button there, and now I'm down to like 12, 12, 1,400 RPMs. So the gas mileage just goes way up. I was going in the 20s, now I'm going in the 30s. Of course, I'm going down the hill. 30s and 40s. Per, per mile. I'm going to switch out of it and go back to standard. Now I'm back in the fourth gear. And I, I rarely have to go out of that. If I am um, was going to try to save gas, which <clears throat> at times I do now, the gas is so high, then I'd probably use it when I was on the road trying to make some, some distance. But other than that, no. Uh, I like the power I still have in fourth gear. I like the torque that's there. I don't kind of want to give up anything because you would immediately give that up when you go into overdrive on any of the gears. But once you realize how you're going to use it, it's it's fine. It's it's uh it's really no different than you know. But it's it's of the time, you know. I mean that's that's what they made and that's what they have. As you can tell, that was a, just a little tidbit of how you put it in overdrive for the, like when you're going 70 miles an hour on the freeway, drop it in overdrive, 
the RPM drops down. Very practical, not too uncommon of the day uh, in any car with overdrive. Where the difference comes on the Corvette is they've designed it so, uh, like in the night from 86 to the 88, when you turned on your car and started it up, your overdrive kicked on automatically. 84 and 85, you had to connect it. Uh, you had to turn it on. It had to switch on to turn it on and off. Um, from 85 to 89, 88 again, your butt, you had a button on the actual shifting knob so you could turn it on and off at any time. But it came on automatically. And the reason that they did that is because they wanted you to use it. If you look in your manual, your manual says to leave it on at all times. If you go out of it any time, make sure you click it back on. If you're going on a hill, you need to do something to always go back to it. So the encouragement is really high for you to really use, use it. Now, what it does is let's say, and primarily it's in second, third, and fourth. There is some confusion on first gear, but the second, third, and fourth is really it comes on. For example, if you're driving, you take off in first gear, and then you put it in second gear, and then you, you're going up to about 30 miles an hour, and you're just holding it there kind of not, so the car's not working, you're not exhilarating, accelerating, you're just moving forward. Then the overdrive will automatically click in. So you may be doing 2200 RPMs, 2300, all of a sudden you're dropping down to 17 or 1500 RPMs uh, without you doing anything. And then if you step on the gas a little bit, and it can be anywhere depending on the speed you're going. Again, there's so much computer control. It, it analyzes, again, the temperature that your car is going, the speed that you're going, and the RPM that you're going all together and decides when to click in this. So you can step on a little hard. It will click out of overdrive. You go back to direct drive as most often it's preferred to. And then you got your power back and performance so you can take off and go. Now here's a page from 5speed.com to put together on each year how the overdrive works in the 4 plus 3 transmission. It gets a little confusing, but uh, as we talked about earlier, the understanding is, is when you're going cruising and you're going in a light throttle, it will shift to the overdrive from that gear. And if you kick on it a little bit, it will pop out. Some of them as high as 70-80% uh, to get it to kick out out of the overdrive and into like the fourth gear or even sometimes the third gear. But you can check that over. Again, thank you from the 5 feedcom now you also remember when you're in overdrive in either one of these gears um, your performance has changed greatly it's like putting yourself in a lower rpm on a higher gear because that's exactly what you're doing but the computer is intelligent enough to not put you in a position that would be hurting your motor or slowing you down in a basis of not having the power to get out of it and if you do hit the throttle a little bit it would come right out of it it's a little confusing. Now, I, I, when people ask me about, oh, you got, you got a 4 plus 2? I go, no, it's 4 plus 3. Oh, is that a 7 speed? No, no, it's not a 7 speed. Well, it kind of is a 7 speed, but it's not really a 7 speed. So it gets a little confusing, but it is, a, I think, a very ingenious idea of how to make it work. Now, the general, general use of it is probably not the way they intended it. Uh, even though the book tells you to leave it like that, it would give you better gas mileage. Just, no question about it. I mean, if you lower the RPM and you're not lowering the RPM where, the, where it's tugging or straining, you should be able to get better gas mileage. And that's what it's all about. The whole thing's all about gas mileage. But the performance part of it can be completely turned off when you turn off overdrive. You are in four, like a regular T10 four-speed overdrive. So that part is great. When you hit it, it's just where I drive mine personally all the time and, and perhaps others too. But uh, it's a regular four-speed transmission. You can hit it. It's solid. I mean, it works great. It really does. And then if you want to have the overdrive when I get up on the expressway or if I'm going out, I'm going on a long run. At 55 even, I'm going on a long run. I'll, I'll click it in there and it would drop it down to 1,700 RPMs or 15, 17. And usually around 1,700 RPMs, I can do like 60, 65, which is pretty incredible and get amazing gas mileage. These are all 30-some years old. There's no... C4 with a 4.3 transmission that isn't 30 plus years old. And it's been through a lot of hands. And what really happens is a guy can have an automatic, a kid, older guy, whatever, and he'll go out with an automatic and never beat that automatic 
like he rolled with that four speed. When he gets in that four speed, as I mentioned earlier, it's a different kind of driving. You're behind the wheel, you're part of the car, you're feeling the RPMs, you're feeling the thrust, it's in your hand. So you have a tendency, people will have a tendency to beat it. And not know really how to put the clutch in, ride the clutch, put the hand on the slot, on the um, gear shift and let it ride there. I don't can't tell you how many times I've seen that, you know, where they hold the hand on the gear shift and like this. When you do that, you're rearing the gears. When you're putting your foot on the clutch and riding the clutch, you're, you're ruining the car. Those things happen over the transport of time that aren't really experienced drivers with the stick shift. But if you are, you take care of it, it's a hell of a transmission, no question about it. Well, anyway, I like it, it works well. You gotta remember, that's what it was. It wasn't like you could go in there and say, hey, give me a six-speed transmission. <laughs> they didn't make them, they didn't allow them. This is part of nostalgia, this is part of the car. And it shouldn't be overlooked, the technology that went in to make that transmission work with this overdrive, totally computer controlled. It's kind of an awesome feat. Well, anyway, I hope you got a kick out of this and you learned something about the C, the, the three or four plus three transmission from, from the Corvette. All right, until next time, take care.